Welcome to the State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The Worship of Anahid Goddess, historical and cultural conference in Yerevan, invitation. Franz Werfel, the first writer who referred to the genocide against Armenians. The street adjacent to the Yerevan Blue Military Pantheon will be named after the hero of Artsakh, Nekorashot. Sons of Western Armenia, Narses Byzantine, general, conqueror and ruler of Italy. Manifestations of seriousness in the search of happiness. Stepan Bilikian. Thousands of Turks are destroying the heritage of Western Armenia, searching for Armenian gold, the economist. Iran reaffirms its principled position regarding the inviolability of international borders. The government of the Republic of Western Armenia and the National Assembly are pleased to invite you to participate in the conference entitled The Worship of Anahid Goddess. This exclusive event aims to introduce the participants to the historical and cultural importance of the worship of the Anahid Goddess, as well as to reflect on her place in the Armenian mythology. The conference will take place on 15 September Sunday at 12 o'clock at the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in Yerevan. This conference will not only give the participants the opportunity to listen to the speeches of experts, but also to discuss the important issues of the cultural heritage of the Armenian people. We look forward to your participation and we appreciate your presence at this important event, which will contribute to the deepening of our national identity and the preservation of our Armenian cultural heritage. The famous writer Franz Werfel was born on 10 September 1819 in Prague in the family of a factory owner. He was prominent among contemporary writers in the first half of the 20th century. Franz Werfel was one of the first who spoke about the genocide in 1915 against the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. During a trip to Syria in 1929, the writer had the idea to write the book The Forty Days of Mossadegh because he simply could not ignore the terrible grief of the Armenian people. The story made him touch on the subject and inform the world about the greatest tragedy of the beginning of the 20th century. Werfel worked on the novel for a long time. In order to write it, the writer studied Armenian history and culture for three years at the Mkhitaryan Monastery in Vienna, got acquainted with documents related to the First World War and talked with Armenians who survived the Turkish massacres. After the publication of the novel The Forty Days of Musadag, Almost the whole world learned about Werfel. In 1944, December, Time magazine called the 40 Days of Musa Dag Book of the Month. Later, the work was translated into 34 languages. Franz Werfel passed away on 26 August 1945. After his death, the representatives of the Armenian community in the USA and Austria took the remains of the writer to Vienna, fulfilling his last will. Shamian 6th Street of the area adjacent to Yara Blur Military Pantheon, starting from the intersection of Mamikonya Shamian 6th Street, reaching the Yara Blur Military Pantheon's Path of Glory. The area adjacent to Vartanant Metris Church was named after Artsakh hero Ashod Gulyan. During the reign of Emperor Justinian of Byzantium, Narses was the imperial treasurer. He was already a Inuit in his seventh when his Justinian unexpectedly sent him to Italy to struggle against the Goths. Despite his age, Narses brilliantly fulfilled the emperor's task, defeated the Goths, and drove them out of Italy, restoring the rule of Justinian's crown in that region. Armenians are known for their strong will and intensity after expressing opinions with great emotion, which outsiders may misunderstand as argumentative. This seriousness stems from beliefs that have been essential to our survival for centuries. Our tragic experiences, particularly the genocide in 1915 and recent crimes seen, are so have deepened our seriousness towards issues of national rights. The denial of the genocide by the Turks has sown bitterness and our struggle for justice continues. Despite these challenges, we continue to celebrate our culture and protect our homeland by supporting its safety and well-being. The Economist 1843 periodical published an article about how the Turks are actively looking for the precious jewelry left by the Armenians during the genocide in 1915. It took place against the Armenians and after that, Treasure hunting has already led to large-scale destruction of Armenian churches and cemeteries and is causing irreparable damage to historical sites. But the Turkish authorities don't hide all these processes. 
At the time, there were more than 600 churches around Lake Vanna. Now there are less than 100 of them. The churches that have remained are like skeletons, and they have been looted, writes the columnist. Yerevan appreciates Iran's support for Armenia's territorial integrity. Armenian Deputy Foreign Minister Vahan Kostanyan wrote on his X microblog informing that he had a telephone conversation with Iran's newly appointed Deputy Foreign Minister Majid Taht Ravanchi. Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister also wrote about the telephone conversation in X reaffirming Tehran's great desire to strengthen relations with all its neighbors. I have also expressed our principled position regarding the inviolability of international borders. Rod Ravanchi emphasizing that he accepted Kostanyan's invitation to visit Yerevan. This was all for today. Goodbye.